Welcome everyone back to a weekly weather update and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar we're on for the UK we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days we have some real autumnal conditions with some chilly weather a proper northerly wind out there today so you may have felt a real chill to the air and that is going to continue over the next couple of days with some quite cold nights as well with temperatures dropping to the low uh, into mid single digits, potentially a ground frost in some places, and just generally feeling pretty cold, at least compared to what we've had uh, over the last four months with some very, uh, very, very warm summer. We'll then have a look at the mid range uh, and the long range, the GFS, GM, ESM, DOF, and the ensembles as there remains a massive amount of uncertainty as we head towards the end of September and start of October. Some runs have higher pressure staying in control, others have some real stormy conditions, uh, and then some other runs still have high pressure involved, but lower pressure closer by. So really, beyond the next seven days or so, we haven't really got much of a clue what's exactly going on. We know what's at play, what sort of systems are going to try and develop, but what's going to win out, we'll have a look at what the models are showing today. Uh, but yeah, there could be a wide range of scenarios towards the end of the month. One thing, I, though, I must say, though, is we aren't looking at any real warm weather. Those are none of the uh, sort of scenarios at this stage. A lot of them are westerly flows, perhaps northerly flows as well, depending on where high pressure builds in. And we could even see high pressure over the top of us, but this time of year that isn't particularly warm with an inversion potentially taking place giving chilly conditions so at the moment if we were going to see warmer weather we need a direct southerly wind i know a lot of people would still enjoy some late uh, summer warmth or early autumn warmth really doesn't likely we're going to be seeing any of that over the next couple of weeks though so yeah if you are a warm weather fan Sadly and unfortunately, we are coming potentially to an e the end of summer. Yes, possibility of some warmer conditions over the next month or so, but over the next couple of weeks, not seeing much of that at the moment. If you're enjoying cooler weather and drier weather, these next week or so is the weather for you. So anyway, uh, do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you look at the live radar, you can see we've got a northerly wind at the moment. We're seeing typical showers in the locations where we do normally see them with an northerly flow. We've got more instability to the east, so we do have more showers there. We have some showers across northern France, northern Ireland, and southwest England at times. But most of these showers are now across eastern Scotland, northeast England, and east Anglia. Most of these are light, but there are some moderate pulses within them. These sort of showers we normally see in the winter when we see some snow showers from northerly or easterly winds. It's the same sort of convection with a cool upper air temperatures with warm sea surface temperatures. That temperature contrast fueling these big convective showers and moving through quite quickly on this brisk northerly wind. And the heavier showers are much further eastwards into Europe, much closer to the centre of the low. Most of it is still falling as rain as it is coming towards the uh, middle of September, but we are seeing some hints of snow potentially in some parts of Scandinavia, but with a general much colder feel. Now recording this around half four, and if we do have a look at those upper, uh, those surface conditions, you can see, look at northern Europe, that is chilly compared to what we've had recently. A lot of blues and yellows, that's mid-teens, maybe low teens. And that doesn't sound cold, but considering it's been 30, 40 degrees only a week or two ago, in some places really is pretty chilly indeed and you can see the uk most areas are blues and yellows which as i said yeah is pretty chilly some slight oranges perhaps across the southwestern parts again furthest away from any northerly coasts uh, and the northerly wind in general so slightly milder there maybe 16 17 degrees but most areas are pretty chilly and it's going to continue like that have a look at this chart later this evening around maybe 4 5 a.m this mo uh, tomorrow morning we'll be going to see a lot of blues and maybe some light blue showing temperatures dropping close to freezing potentially in a few spots so, if we do go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipita precipitation and the temperature it's doing over the next five days, again, you can see, if we do head to this afternoon, you can see those temperatures, uh, sorry, the uh, precipitation showers in the east, elsewhere just some cumulus clouds and a few showers popping up here or there around 3pm. Now, if we do run overnight tonight... The shower activity does diminish, few showers still across East Anglia, but overnight many areas have clear skies and that will allow uh, temperatures to really drop even towards 5 degrees or lower than that in a few places. Now tomorrow it's another dry day, few showers across northern Scotland, maybe a few in East Anglia, but once again, really quite dry day. 
Overnight again, it's going to be colder, more thicker cloud around, and some few showers uh, through early hours of Sunday. But once again, a reasonably dry day, and that continues into Monday. Maybe some precipitation across northern Scotland, but elsewhere, still very dry, pretty chilly, before eventually we start to see more of a westerly flow. Thicker cloud and some showers, but nothing too major at all. Now, if we have a look at the mean, uh, mean winds at the moment, you can see how we got a real brisk northerly flow. Nothing crazy, but that's why the temperatures are feeling uh, really uh, quite chilly. And the upper air temperatures generally are cold, and they're going to even be lowering over the next few hours, dropping widely towards freezing, if not below that in a few places. Now, if you look at those two meter temperatures, you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking around 16, 17 or 18 degrees, but widely mid to low teens. It's overnight tonight, though. Temperatures will really fall. Look at that around 5, 6 a.m., widely 5 or 6 degrees, maybe 7 or 8 in a few spots, and even below 5 in a few areas, maybe 1, 2 or 3 degrees in, in the central areas, even as low as, uh, even as far down as southwest England over some of the higher ground, maybe 3 or 4 degrees as possible, and a set of ground frost again in a few spots. So, yeah. Really quite a chilly morning, so if you are, are if you are up tomorrow morning quite early, it is going to feel cold. Uh, you know, some areas may even be sort of hats and gloves type weather, especially if you're out before sort of 9 or 10 a.m. going to feel really chilly indeed. Now, beyond that, as we head towards the afternoon, it does warm up. We do see temperatures widely 15 to 17 degrees, uh, but still chilly further north. It's low teens there, another chilly, brisk northerly wind. And yeah, feeling quite cold. And overnight, once again, those temperatures dropping. Thick cloud around, holding those temperatures up in northern England, but still widely 5 to 10 degrees. Very chilly compared to nights we've had, we've had over the past couple of months where it's hardly dropped really below 15 degrees overnight in some areas. So yeah, really chilly indeed. And through into Sunday afternoon, again, widely mid-teens. Maybe slightly higher in quite a few areas, maybe 15, 16, 17 degrees, but still feeling pretty cold again can't say for certain exactly what these uh, temperatures will be at the surface and exactly how it will feel but temperatures will recover slightly through sunday and overnight into monday still chilly overnight in the north and monday afternoon widely again mid to maybe high teens so a little bit warmer westerly flow not feeling amazingly warm but not quite as chilly and into tuesday very similar, maybe even 20 or 21 towards the sort of the South Wales, Bristol, Cardiff sort of area. So I have to keep an eye on that uh, because that would be pretty pleasant perhaps next week after a couple of days of chillier weather. So yeah, warmer potential is still there, but it's unlikely to be widespread and it all will be dependent on sunshine. That's widely though, still it looks like mid-teens are going to be the temperature over the next five days or so. So yeah, um, do wrap up warm if you are out early. Early in the morning, or late at night, or if you are sort of in exposed areas, that wind can blow. It's going to feel chilly. And yes, the temperatures in the thermometer are not that bad, considering what we can see over the course of winter and spring months. But compared to the past three or four months we've had over summer, this really is quite a bit colder. So it is going to be, uh, be a shock to the system for many. So, if you now do go over to the GFS and see how that does compare over the next couple of weeks. Again, northerly flow in at the moment, really quite chilly. High pressure topples, turning things drier, but still reasonably chilly. Uh, but as you saw by those, uh, those temperature charts, it does uh, recover slightly. Beyond that, we see a bit of a westerly flow, but it's beyond that as we head towards day 10, the uncertainty comes in. Where does this high pressure system go? Some models have it pushing much further eastwards, bringing in a westerly flow. This run has over the top of us pulling in more of an easterly flow, and actually quite a chilly, bris brisk easterly flow. This would be really cold in the winter, but we do see a real quite chilly air mass from the east pushing in low dew points. Very low upper air temperatures, and we see similar conditions to what we see now, with, but but perhaps with more widespread uh, showers in the east. That would be really quite cold indeed from the GFS. Again, we can't get that much in terms of cold weather because of the time of year. But look at the potential equivalent temperature from this, and yeah, look at that air mass. Really quite chilly indeed. All those blues coming in, showing it's quite a cold air mass, and yeah, very interesting seeing that today. And again, look at those temperature deviations, look at those blues, quite thick blues there, 4 to 6 degrees below average, really chilly indeed. So yeah, it could be some more cold weather from the GFS today in the longer term with an easterly wind. But if you do have a look at the GEM, and you'll be able to see that it doesn't really correlate that much with the GEM. Northern wind at the moment, the high pressure does topple, bringing us drier, 
slightly milder weather, but nothing mild or warm at all. Westerly flow comes in, and where does the high-pressure system go? It goes to our east, and what do we do? We see a westerly flow. This would bring milder conditions in for the south. Still some cooler conditions maybe oscillating in the north, but nothing substantial at all. But it would be much more showery with heavy bouts of rain in the north and west with stronger winds. And with the jet stream coming in through the direct westerly, you see little Atlantic systems could get picked up, ex-hurricanes could get picked up, and we could see some stormy weather as we end September with a big mother low towards southern Greenland. So big, big contrast. This is big low pressure towards Greenland. The GFS is big high pressure towards Greenland as soon as day 10. So this is why we have so much uncertainty. It's where these high pressure systems go. And I do think it's all got to do with a combination of the jet stream forming this time of year, where it still isn't hugely strong, but it still can make an influence, and these ex-tropical systems that are pumping energy into the North Atlantic, uh, and where the uh, jet stream, a low-pressure system, high-pressure divide, does meander, can decide our weather. Um, and you can see two massively differing views on the GFS and the GEM run today. If you look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, a northerly flow at the moment. High pressure does topple, turning things dry, but not too much milder. Then we see a westerly flow, and this sort of in between. The high pressure does not progress to our east. It sort of hangs to our south, and the low pressure systems are much to our north. So it could, would, would still be quite unsettled and chillier further northwards, but the southwards could be milder um, and a, quite a bit drier as well. Look at those upper air temperatures could be quite warm. So this would be warmer in the south, still reasonably warm in the north, but much more unsettled and much windier perhaps as well. And still could be stormy with low pressure systems. Our north just would only really dominate across parts of Scotland. So yeah, all these runs have high pressure trying to move in from the south and west. The GFS has it pushing well to our north, blocking pattern. The GEM has it pushing us well to our east with a westerly flow. The ECMWF has it hung to ourselves, still a westerly flow, more of a drier westerly flow in the south, wetter in the north. So massive differing views, as I said, today. So, if we do finish by having a look at the ensemble, we'll see what they're showing today. Again, you can see from the GFS, much colder than average over the next sort of five or six days, trending towards average and staying around there, but oscillating up and down. So, no terribly warm or mild weather, but no terribly cold weather, apart from a few runs in the long term, including that operational run. So, yeah, we'll have to see what happens with that, but at the moment, it looks generally around or slightly below average for the foreseeable future, towards the last week of. Uh, September into the start of October, it could turn a lot more unsettled, but there is massive uncertainty with what is happening with the high pressure and low pressure. And you can see that by having the sea level pressure here. You see in the longer term, look at that. We have some at around 1,025, 1,030 millibars, others down to 985. So big, big contrast, some stormy, some much more settled, high pressure dominated. And if we do compare it to the ECMWF, Again, look at those 850 HPA temperatures. Again, pretty chilly over the next five or six days. Then trending towards average, slightly above, slightly below at times. And the precipitation signal increases around the 22nd, 23rd. So once again, big uncertainty with upper air temperatures. Some much warmer, some much colder than average. Perhaps a little bit more of an, uh, an above average in the longer term. But majority of ensemble members uh, are sort of in around the average area. And precipitation does pick up. But again feel very much split between higher pressure and lower pressure. If you do compare that to the sea level pressure, look at that big split again, more perhaps dominating more towards high pressure for the south, for London area, but still quite a few still going lower pressure. So we'll just have to see what happens in the long term. The next seven days, though, look pretty settled. Uh, yes, we'll be a few showers around, but it'll be drier, probably chilly in places and quite cold overnight temperatures. So, yeah, the next five days or so looks below average in terms of temperatures and it looks pretty dry as well. So, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, temperature's not great, but it's not too bad to get out there and do stuff. The longer term, though, massive, massive uncertainty, all depending on where the jet stream goes and whether we do see it flat westerly, amplified, perhaps northerly or easterly, like the GFS was showing, or more of a split jet stream where it's still flat westerly but shifted slightly further northwards, like the GFS uh, so with the eastern DF was showing, where it's still drier in the south, maybe warmer in the north, more unsettled. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you enjoy the dry weather we have in over the next few days because, again, no guarantees what we're going to be seeing towards the end of the month. Uh, and I'll see you again for another video soon.